the Ephesian church has more words of commendation than any other church. Since she was larger and more influential than any of these other churches, this is what we would expect. These are not just superficial, shallow comments either. Jesus Christ knows her deeds. The commendation for each church begins with the words, I know. The first time in the Word of God this phrase is found is Genesis 4.1, which the NIV translates, Adam lay with his wife Eve. The King James Version more literally translates, Adam knew Eve, his wife. The closest experience we can have to the way God knows us is sexual intercourse. Jesus knows us completely and intimately. So each of the things Ephesus is commended for is something that Jesus loves about Ephesus and that Jesus has an intimate knowledge and experience of. Deeds, hard work, perseverance, intolerance of wicked men, testing men's spiritual claims, persevering and enduring hardships without growing weary are all works which Jesus loves and desires to see in all of his churches. May this commendation be said of our church. This is not the standard of the world. The world wants us to tolerate wickedness, to allow wickedness in without any standards to measure it against, no tests. Satan wants us to grow weary and give up our standards. In 1 Corinthians 13, Paul tells us that if we do not have love, we are nothing. Even if we are doing all the right things, we are nothing without love. Jesus said that the first and greatest command was to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. The Ephesian church was doing everything right, but while doing right, had left her first love, Jesus Christ. Aphiomi is sometimes translated abandon, desert, or divorce. Doing the service became more important than the one being served. Remember Mary and Martha, keeping in mind the words of Christ, you should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. Leaving our first love, Jesus Christ, is a sin of which we must repent. It seems odd, after this list of works for which the Ephesian church is commended, that for repentance they are commanded to do the things you did at first. In the book of Acts we are told that the early Ephesians held the Lord Jesus Christ in high honor, that they turned from evil, and they burned books of sorcery, that Paul daily taught in the school of Tyrannus for two years, and that God worked mightily through Paul healing the sick. At Ephesus, Aquila and Priscilla taught Apollos about Christ, since he only knew John's baptism. At Ephesus, Paul baptized believers who knew only of John's baptism into the name of Christ, and these believers spoke in tongues and prophesied. In the letter to the Ephesians, Paul writes that this church is largely a Gentile church. They seem to need to be grounded in the Word of God. The Ephesian church no longer loved God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. They were no longer searching the Scriptures daily and living in obedience to the things the Spirit of God revealed to them through the Word of God. This departure from our first love is a fall from a great height. The threatened judgment of God is the removal of their lampstand. The lampstand is both the witness in the community and the very existence as a church. Why is the praise of the hatred of works, practices, and deeds of the Nicolaitans listed after the warning and not with the rest of the commendations? We do not know exactly what the doctrines of the Nicolaitans were. I believe that the Nicolaitans symbolize all heresy, all false doctrine. In this one area, the Ephesians had not left their first love. I believe that this hatred of false teaching is a work of love for Christ. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. These exact words are repeated at the end of each message to each church. Every believer and every church has the physical ability to hear the message of Jesus Christ. God has given us the message of his word, and along with that message, the responsibility to hear, listen, and understand that message. That is, our responsibility 
which we cannot claim before the judgment bar of God that we did not know about. It is also interesting that the message to hear is addressed all seven times to the churches, plural. The promise of the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God, is part of salvation. All who are saved have the right to eat from the tree of life. What this warning is saying, and it is the same as the warning given to six of the seven churches, is that not everyone who is a member of a church is actually saved. The emphasis for the Ephesians on the tree of life in the paradise of God is rest which is the reward for faithful service. The name Smyrna means myrrh. It was a city 40 miles north of Ephesus. The emphasis on Jesus Christ is that he is the first and the last who died and came to life again. He is the creator and judge of all things. He gives life to all and will take that life back for those who reject him. His resurrection not only gives him eternal life, but gives him the right to give that life to others. The same knowledge Jesus has of the Ephesian church he has for each church. Once more, the spiritual view of a situation is the real situation. Persecution, affliction, and material poverty hide the true riches of the Smyrna church. Do not make the mistake that all who are materially poor are spiritually rich. The vast majority of the materially poor are also spiritually poor. It is sad that material wealth usually means spiritual poverty. Smyrna's riches were a result of her love for her Lord and her obedience to his word. This, along with Paul's letter to the Galatians, are the clear statements in scripture that those who are physical Jews but reject Jesus Christ are not truly Jews. In Smyrna, their attack of the church earned them the title synagogue of Satan. Smyrna was promised suffering, imprisonment, and persecution for 10 days. Whether this means 10 actual days as we would count days, or this is symbolic, is unclear. That the early church suffered tremendous persecution is well documented. The crown of life is not eternal salvation. That is promised to all who believe, whether they are martyred or not. This is a special reward for those who are faithful unto death. This crown, the Stephanos, is reward given to a winner in an athletic contest or to a victorious general. The overcomer will not be hurt at all by the second death. This promise of comfort for steadfast faithfulness is for anyone in the church age. This is not salvation by works, but the faith that saves works. By their fruit you will know them. God is looking on the heart.